What's up everyone? Darkblade here returning with my Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide. Today we are going to take a look at one of the first DLC characters, the Batarian Sentinel. Now originally I was put off by this character due to its moves and abilities. Also I wasn't very attracted to the Batarians as a race. But after playing with it for some time I found out that this class isn't too bad. Now as always I spent my classes for the harder difficulties in the game. For the Batarian Sentinel I max out blade armor, putting points into power recharge, damage returned and durability. I like to use this build for the blade armor so it doesn't damage my power recharge timer too badly. Now I put a few points into shockwave but this is only to set off combinations from yourself and your teammates. Now submission net is a unique move for the Batarian Sentinel. I put points into electric field because I like abilities that add a damage over time effect on them and this adds that damage over time effect to the submission net. Normally I would say go damage and slow but I went with recharge speed thanks to the fact that my recharge speed is slowed down considerably thanks to the blade armour. And damage I would take over incapacitate because you can't incapacitate every enemy and every enemy can be damaged by the net. Lastly, for Batarian Enforcer and Fitness, I always say these are down to personal preference. I go for normally power damage and weight reduction as a whole for all my characters, and going for maximum health and shields is always a good way to survive. As for weaponry, this depends if you use your powers a lot. If you do, then go for maybe a medium weight weapon or even a lightweight weapon. If you're not too bothered about your powers and like to use your blade armor for maximum damage protection, then maybe go with some heavier weapons. Anyway, let's go into a bit of detail about the Batarian Sentinel's moves and abilities. The first ability to the Batarian Sentinel is Blade Armor. I talked a bit about this during the Batarian Soldier Guide. Basically, the Batarian Sentinel forms these blades around his armor, giving him extra damage protection, but as a penalty, slowing his power recharge timer. It also increases the Batarian Sentinel's melee capabilities. Now while I've mentioned that you can increase the amount of damage protection that blade armor gives you, I don't like to put full points into damage protection for the blade armor. This is because I do like to use the powers for the Batarian Sentinel. And if you do have max damage protection, then you really do suffer in the power recharge time department. Now one thing I should know, although I have put points in damage returned, which is really nice against the Reapers and other melee users, be careful because you can still get insta-killed even though you've got this talent. Another tip I suppose you could use but I never really find it that useful is that you can turn off blade armor and turn it on when you're in a bad situation. So you could potentially have your blade armor with the max damage protection and turn it off when you actually do want to use your powers. However I do find this process a little bit tedious so I don't always use it and thus this is why I spec my blade armor the way it is. Now the second move and ability that the Batarian Sentinel has is Shockwave. Now I covered Shockwave in other videos, mainly the Human Adept video. Now I know Shockwave has had patches applied to it since the Human Adept video. It's still pretty much the same, the gist of the move is the same. Basically it fires out a biotic wave, cascading towards enemies, knocking them flying. It also has the added advantage of that it has the ability to go through wars, which is always useful. Always try to remember this when playing as someone who has the shockwave ability because being able to hit someone on the opposite side of the wall is so useful for the team and for yourself. Now the other thing about now the other useful thing about shockwave is that it can be used to activate combinations, biotic combos and tech combos. Shockwave can't be used to set up any combinations itself unless you put maximum points into the shockwave tree, putting points mainly into lifting shockwave. But because the Batarian Sentinel can actually activate a biotic combo from lifting shockwave, I've not put maximum points into shockwave. One tactic I frequently use with Shockwave is the fact that it has a nice staggering effect on most enemies. For example, the Cerberus Guardians. When they're coming at you with their shields, hit them full blast in the face with a Shockwave, it will stagger them, their shields will be off balance, giving you a clear shot and an easy kill. Anyway, let's move on to the third and final ability of the Batarian Sentinel and its unique move, the only person to use this move in the game, the Submission Net. The Batarian Sentinel fires a wrist-mounted net that flies towards opponents. It actually looks like a spider's web. 
The submission net has various functions as well. Firstly, it can be used to entrap enemies, like you see here. It ensnares, basically, people who are unarmoured. And for those opponents who do have armour, it just deals a nice bit of damage towards them. Enemies who are incapacitated with the submission net look like they're covered in a spider's web, like I said earlier at the start of this little section. These enemies are unable to move for a certain amount of time. But the downside is, if you don't actually kill them, then they build up a resistance to the net. So if you do trap them again, it won't be for as long. It's like a diminishing returns effect that you would find in MMORPGs and so on. The only downside with the submission net that I've found when it comes to ensnaring opponents is that some of the opponents, i.e. the phantoms, still have the ability, although unarmoured, to block the submission net's ensnaring effect. This doesn't mean that you should not try to ensnare a phantom, because it does sometimes work when they're unaware that you're firing the submission net on them, for example. Against armoured people, like I said, it does maximum damage, but the biggest thing that submission net can do is it can set up tech combos. It can set up the tech combo tech burst. Tech burst is when you've hit someone with a tech based combo and follow it up with another move. That person who is hit with that move will then sprout electricity from them, damaging their allies who are nearby. And this is why I've put a few points into Shockwave for the Batarian Sentinel, as it allows the Batarian Sentinel to set up tech bursts and activate them on his own. This means you don't have to rely on your teammates to activate your combos. It is also a great source of damage for the Batarian Sentinel. As for the Batarian's passive abilities, the Batarian Enforcer and Fitness, like I said, these are all down to personal preference, but I normally always go with power damage increase and weight reduction in the Batarian Forcer tree and I always go for health and shields in the fitness tree although with the Batarians because they are actually quite good at melee it can be optional to put points into increased melee damage actually if you did want to make a Batarian melee build then you would want to maybe put some points into the increased melee damage in the blade armor tree as well as for weaponry, like I said at the start of the video, if you like to use your powers, go with a medium weight weapon or even a lightweight one. If you don't and like to go for max damage protection with your blade armor on all the time, then go with heavier weapons. The Batarians as a race are very similar to the way the Turians move. They don't have a roll or a dodge, which can be troublesome, but in returns they do have high health and high shields, which is always great to have. The Batarians do have some of the best melee moves in the game, their standard melee is still quite strong and their charge up super falcon punch move for their heavy melee is really powerful and always fun to watch. So this has been the Batarian Sentinel, you might overlook him at first glance thanks to his moves and abilities as well as his appearance as a Batarian, but once you play as him a little bit and get used to his moves and abilities then you'll find out that he is actually not a bad class to play as. Maybe not the greatest out there, but he's not the worst in my opinion. Anyway, I've been Darkblade bringing you my guide to the Batarian Sentinel in Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. Hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe and like for more.